we're not thrilled with it. Uh, people aren't thrilled with it. And I would, the one thing good about being in a town like Cincinnati and it's a college basketball, people are going to care. And they're going to care when you win. They're going to care when you don't do well. So far, the season hasn't been what Xavier was hoping for. The team has fallen out of the top 25, and yesterday, one of the Muskies' top reserves, Desmond Walker, quit. Still, X is starting to show signs of living up to its potential. You know what I love? Those kids who clean up the wet spots on the court, like Matt Carlin. Throw them a couple of quarters, and we'll shine your shoes. The Musketeers facing Loyola Marymount. This is Lloyd Price with a jam. That was nice, but the story of this game wasn't points in the paint. It was Xavier's outside shooting in the first half. Lenny Brown for three. Brown hit three of them and scored 15 points, moving into 10th place on Xavier's all-time scoring list. His backcourt mate, Gary Lumpkin, broke out of a season-long slump, hitting eight of 10 shots, including three threes for 21 points. And James Posey added a dozen points, becoming a member of the 1,000-point club at Xavier in the process. The Musketeers roll tonight 97-52. The way Lenny's shooting, and we get Gary and, and James shooting the ball well, um, and if our big guys continue to improve, um, then we have a chance to be a... a the Xavier Musketeers game today with the Rhode Island Rams, and he's right. It was a sensational basketball game to watch. Xavier fans got a chance to see sophomore sensation Lamar Odom get his team into the lead. Rhode Island has height and bulk, and they use it. Xavier rallied back late in the first half thanks to the hot shooting of Mo McAfee. Xavier led by two, or trailed by two at half. It was a point in time where either we, we, we either go from here or it's going to be too late. It almost got to be too late. While Xavier was making mistakes, Lloyd Price goes 360, but not through the hoop. Rhode Island was flying high. Tavares Bell from the side. Bell again on the alley-oop. Odom on the pass to Clay for the jam. Rhode Island went ahead by 11. We weren't going to get any taller. Uh, I noticed that. And um, so we had to get quicker. That with a three-guard offense. That got the ball to Lenny Brown, who got hot. Brown hit three consecutive threes as Xavier made a run. My boy LB was hot. <laughs> he was hot. Right? I mean, if you, find, if you got a shooter hot, you got to keep going to him. So I just tried to make it a point to find him. Brown scored 22 of a career-high 31 points in the second half as Xavier made a 29-9 run. McAfee added 18 points and 10 assists as he sprinted from the bench. And Lumpkin had 11, some key, as Xavier beat the Rams 87-83. You know, we were 1-0 and um, beats the alternative. On the road to Virginia Tech, they made a statement early. It came from freshman Kevin Fry. Three for him, all on the way to 12 with eight rebounds. James Posey with the ball, tangled up a little bit, but puts it up nevertheless. He had 20 points toward the effort, eight rebounds. Lenny Brown, though, money in the bank, three here, 24 for the game, 18 in the second half when they took better care of the ball, just six turnovers. They went 80-67 and head for Pittsburgh and Duquesne on Saturday. Elsewhere this evening, number one Connecticut. We're working a five-game win streak, and at Virginia Tech tonight, Darnell Williams healing and Lenny Brown, well, he was smoking the good kind, banging away from three and in a groove again. Everybody likes his game. Hokies keep it close for a while. This is Dennis Mims putting the move on Kevin Fry. And Mo McAfee, you know what he did against URA. URI is back on the boards tonight and making with the good stuff. Muskies take it away down the stretch. James Posey to Gary Lumpkin. Uh-huh, you got to like that. But once more, the man of downtown Lenny Brown. Another three. He ends up with 24. Xavier takes the hope. He's 80-67. They're at Duquesne 7. Duquesne in his hometown of Pittsburgh. Obviously, they didn't know he was coming there. Not a lot of people. Fast break. Brown to lump into Posey. He gets blocked and then tags it with the follow. Posey finishes with 13. In the second, Xavier pulls away. Lenny Brown moves off the pick. Gets open and squares up for two of his 13. But it was once again Mo McAfee who pulled X from the ruins. He busts the three wide open. He had 14 as the Muskies stay perfect in the A-10. He's six with two. Battling for winning because we have good chemistry. If we have good chemistry because we're winning. You know, we'll find out. You know, we're going to get tested again Wednesday against Bonnie's. Uh, it, it's just a tough, tough league. We've never started out in this league 3-0, so we're thrilled to be that way at this point. While Xavier was at Duquesne, James Posey off the dribble takes it strong to the hole. Posey had 13 points and 10 boards on the day. Some good defense by Skip Prosser's squad. Gary Lumpkin with a pickpocket. Posey helps him out. Lumpkin lays it in. Lumpkin had nine in the contest. The Frost, Kevin Fry, he got into the act. He uses a little muscle in the paint. 
Fry with a soft touch and the foul. Another big game for Mo McAfee. Mo would step up from outside, drops the long range triple. He led the team with 14 as Xavier wins 56 to 42. Stephen King novel, not for the faint of heart, though 3,000 some diehards showed, to urge on the Muskies who couldn't break up with the Bonnies. They fell behind by four when Isaac, I'm king of the world, drilled his three. A cue the defense, and Aaron Turner, just academically eligible, made quite the debut. Four boards and this block to get him going. James Posey picked up on that, celebrating his 22nd birthday. He put on a special spin move to mark the occasion and his 16 points, nine rebounds, and four steals. Lenny Brown's lay-in gave him the lead at 48-46, and they would never trail again, though they did look back. You can count on that. Gary Lumpkin helped keep him at bay with this three. He had 14 for the game, though they had to sweat out their poor foul shooting for a five-point win. Teams are going to play as hard because they know how much it means, you know, in conference play. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're going to be on top or the bottom. So this was, um, you know what I'm saying, a big step. It's an Atlantic 10 victory, and each of those are special. And so uh, we're happy, we'll take it, we'll run with it, and it gives us a lot of things that we need to work on in practice.